as uh, I'm not going to bore you with this slide, uh, but essentially, um, I think we have already heard that transcatheter repair techniques currently are short of a, a good solution for every different pathology. And uh, one of these, I think the major challenge is the closing pressure. Um, anchoring is difficult, of course, uh, but the closing pressure is systolic, and hence there's going to be a constant displacement upwards, and that may cause uh, multiple problems. Uh, one of the ways to address different pathologies as well as how the fixation happens uh, is the Edwards Fortis device. So it has taken seven, seven years of different iterations uh, to come to a point for the first generation Fortis device. Uh, it has got three parts. The central part is the functioning part, which is made of three bovine leaflets uh, with a GLX technology. So it's a dry sealed valve. It comes pre-packed. And uh, it looks like essentially a 29 sapien valve, which most of us have used in our practice today. It's self-expanding, so it's made from nitinol. Uh, more importantly, it has got two different additional parts. One is at the top, which is a flange, which sits on the base of the left atrium. And then it has got two pedals, uh, which I'll show you in the next few slides, which help to anchor the device. So it's designed in such a way that one is it will sit very nicely and stay there. And uh, the idea is that it will also reduce the PV leak. So these two pedals, which are exactly on the opposite side, uh, essentially you will see it in the movie later, that they open and they go around the mitral in the A2 and P2 region because that's the area which is without any cordae. And you have to place the pedals right at the AV groove junction and that's uh, pretty important. The delivery system is pretty intuitive, although it's large in size. It's at present uh, 38 to 39 French. Uh, it's a trans delivery system. And I must say that if we were not experienced in TAVI and this delivery system was given to me 10 years ago, I would have really fainted. Uh, today our experience in TAVI is there, so we can probably as surgeons, we can learn this slightly better. Uh, there are, it's to a point to around 80% of the wall you can reposition it not necessarily reuse the valve again, and uh, to a point it is repositionable and uh, again adjustable. So this is just an animation. It's a transepical procedure, slightly larger per string than we are used to for transepical. Uh, the valves contained in the system, you essentially unsheath the pedals first and deflect them outside. There's a mechanism to do that with a knob, and then advance it in the A2 and P2 region to grab both the leaflets. At that point, you focus on the atrium and you release uh, the, the top radar-like sheath at the base of the left atrium. Then essentially, you're grabbing now the leaflets against the body of the main valve and then you deliver the valve. And this is, uh, again, uh, you know, there's a very famous surgeon from England, Aina Redu, said diagrams don't bleed. And actually, it looks very nice on animation. So. This is how it looks in animal implant. This is a chronic animal implant. Uh, just to highlight, you can see the aortic valve and the mitral valve that uh, it can be done. And you can see how a surgeon's view will look like in a, a chronic animal implant. So I think the regulatory strategy, as Neil has highlighted, what we had to do was to go to MHRA or equivalent of MHRA in other countries and then uh, approach these patients as compassionate uh, use in all these uh, cases. The first case we did was on 18th of February in St. Thomas. As you can see, we are smiling, so obviously the patient had done well. It was a long procedure, and uh, this is essentially the procedure. The procedure is echo-guided. Uh, I'm showing you a combination of fluoro and echo just uh, so that you get a good impression. Uh, we place the uh, wire. We make sure that we use a balloon catheter so that the cordae are not trapped. You, put the delivery system and you can appreciate that the size of the delivery system is much bigger than the trans systems we use. And then unsheath the pedal, advance it to the AV groove. You can see it very nicely on 2D echo that this is in the A2P2 region and the leaflet mobility, pretty similar to a big mitra clip probably. And then you close the pedals on the leaflets and the body, as you can see it very nicely here. And then at that moment, you take a deep breath and then you release the valve and uh, the valve's released. And essentially, 
if you have caught the A2 and P2 properly, this is a really good procedure. And this is what we have learned. And we have already discussed that uh, it's, it's a tethered P2. It's going to be a challenge. And again, uh, you can get some beautiful images. So totally 12 patients, and uh, which I can disclose today. Uh, you can see that the first three patients from St. Thomas is the age is 62, 57, and 65. So these are completely different patients than what we are used to doing TAVI. If I go back eight years ago when we started TAVI, the age was 98, 98, and 98, or something like that. So these are very young patients. These are very sick patients. Uh, and these are the patients in which we had multiple problems and you can see the procedure time, again, is variable. The first procedure was 84 minutes. Then it has come down to 36 minutes in our third case. Similar trend, when centers are doing more cases, it's just getting slightly easier. Uh, the acute recovery, uh, the first patient uh, was discharged after 15 days, was readmitted after 34 days, and then eventually died with heart failure in 76 days. Uh, second patient, there was a technical problem. We did not capture the posterior leaflet completely. It was a partial capture. And uh, the valve was displaced slightly up on one side on day two. She was a renal transplant patient with a known history of uh, active MRSA, and we lost her on the day four. Uh, day three patient, uh, uh, the third patient is most interesting. He is alive and doing well more than a year later. And then again, a similar trend in multiple other centers, but last uh, seven patients done in Canada have done extremely well. Uh, this is just to show you that the implant time, I wouldn't judge it too harshly at present, uh, but as the centers are getting more experienced, there's a cross-fertilization of ideas. Uh, it's getting better and better. Now, I was talking to Mamta that as a surgeon, the only thing I looked on a uh, mitral was doing a case saying, oh, there's a bit of color, there's MR. I think we have to learn to uh, educate ourselves. We have to learn ourselves to read echoes properly. And we have to slowly become cardiologists from that point of uh, view. So the lessons we have learned is patient selection is crucial. Compassionate cases is very hard uh, because these are the patients who are turned down for surgery, turned on for everything, and then you're screening them with a nearly 50 to 60 percent not suitable for this single size device which is there. So yeah, it's really bottom of the barrel. And these are extremely, so I think we have to change the tact and go to high risk rather than inoperable patients and maybe we'll see better results. Imaging again, as Neil has highlighted, extremely important. Uh, you spend a month of planning to do one case. And three important things are annulus, A2P2 distance, and more importantly, LVOT. Uh, LV geometry, we learned from second patient, she had a large aneurysm at the apex which was calcified, so our puncture point was not ideal. And I think that's again very important that these sheets are very rigid sheets and you only get single straight shot. You cannot maneuver them in any way. And uh, again, John Luke, I think your slide, the neocord, I think you have similar problem. If your puncture is not correct, you're going to be in a different place. So this is the diagram to show that uh, if you are at angle of more than 45 or 15, 20 degrees, the, you're going to miss one of the leaflets. Um, if given a choice today, I would, I would rather capture posterior leaflet because the anterior leaflet is very large and then you can capture it slightly lower and still survive. Um, and other key important points as again Neil and everybody has highlighted that uh, these are very, very important things. So this is the echo after six months uh, this patient, interestingly, we anticoagulated him for six months and then he's just on aspirin. Uh, there is a lot of debate in the space now that because there is a lot of cloth on these devices, uh, whether they need uh, a low range anticoagulation lifelong. We are seeing some results from mitral valve in valve that some of some patients developed a very thin layer of thrombus on these valves because there's a lot of stent and cloth and it disappears with anticoagulation. So I think the time will tell us uh, the exact correct anticoagulation, but I'm sure in 88-year-old, you probably are very skeptical about uh, dual antiplatelet as well as anticoagulation. You land in another problem. So essentially, the visibility experience has now expanded. The U.S. visibility has started. Uh, we cannot disclose, of course, the results. Uh, U.K., we are waiting for MHRA to approve, again, the feasibility study, uh, as we can't do any compassionate cases at present. And once that starts, I'm sure with multiple devices and good centers participating, uh, this space will only grow. Thank you.